All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan. Oh, and hopefully everyone had a pretty good day yesterday, because I certainly did. Uh, that Hustlers University stuff. Oh, all I could say is, man, where have I been all this time? But I actually was very lucky. Like, God put me right at the exact right moment, right after the end, basically, of a two-month chop where it was basically impossible to trade and apparently at the end of this bear market too so you know this is like perfect all right so yeah i'm pretty much i don't know my account is up like a shit ton of money i think we started like 2000 now i'm up to like 3800 bucks i'll probably be up to 4000 once the market's open all right because i'm because yesterday i was supposed to day trade a nvidia call right buy it Buy it yesterday and then sell it a couple hours later, right? The problem is I have a trading restriction. I have trading restrictions on my account. Well, it's soft. I can't do day trades unless I call up my broker and then like pay twenty bucks for a broker assisted fee. And um, yeah, so I had to hold it till overnight till today. And I was like, oh man, I hope it doesn't drop too much. So I can profit because they already sold yesterday, right? They made fifty percent, all right. But if I, but it looks like I'll be able to sell and make like one hundred twenty percent. So I've actually been beginning to post all my wins on my uh, water here. Oh, I was about to hit the stop recording button. No, I want to do hide the camera. So you can see on the upper right, you can just see it here. So this was the first real trade that I had when I joined uh, earlier this week. I mean, I joined last Friday or something like that, but basically a nice 20% gain here. Uh, he, he made a, sh and then we, ha and then we took some losses, all right, uh, and then we took some losses, right, so I lost about, I want to say about $200, maybe $220, right, because, like, we because we had to adjust, because we were going short, and then we had a breakout, and then, you know, Ayush, the stock professor, is like, okay, we got to go long, we got to take our losses and go long, because we we're in a breakout, we're going, we're going bull mode, all right, so we, you know, so we ate the bullets, right? Uh, and it worked out really well because I already made it all back, and then now I'm in deep in profit. It's like it's actually kind of insane. Like once you just can kind of just figure out what the trend is, because that's the hardest part. Yeah, then money just rains from the sky, right? Because that's really the only hurdle. So we had a shop call. This is, you know, I mean, this already makes up for half of my losses, right? And then I sold. Then we had a bunch of other plays. TQQ. QQQ, which is NASDAQ and Amazon, so you can just see for yourself how much money was made off of this, right? My Amazon call, how much did my Amazon call make? Yeah, so, oh, I actually wrote it over here. So, let's see, oh, great, I, I combined it all. Yeah, so this was like 50%, 75% on my Amazon call, is that right? Yeah, like 60%, 65%. My NASDAQ call, which I was not supposed to take because it costed too much money for my account size, but I did it anyway because obviously I'm very experienced and also, you know, I have Greg Manorino's teachings and everything else that I know. So I knew that the indices were going up because what do I do every day, All right, We look at the stock markets. And as long as the easy money flows, well, guess what happens? Oh, well, gee, you know, I get, a, I, I, I get my slice of the central bank uh, printing uh, press. So I made 50% on this NASDAQ call. I was definitely happy to just get rid of this thing because it was way too much. It was way too expensive, right? It just happened to be in my favor because we caught, we caught the right beginning of a bull move up, and which made sense because everything was so oversold. So it made total sense. And as we're going to talk about, too, I know that this chips bill is what's actually pumping the markets. you got the Fed and the government pumping money into the system, right? Bear market people are like, including Greg Manorino, unfortunately, are way too uh, biased towards the downside, and it's like screwing everything up, right? Now even his call, Jeffy, has lost money. I already sold it so I could have more liquid cash to keep trading stocks, and thank God that I did, right? And then uh, I already talked about Amazon. Uh, this was not part of the signals, but I bought this anyway because I wanted to get a cheaper version of that of a Nasdaq call so I bought an out-of-the-money call and then you know that made me like 51 percent or 50 percent or whatever so that's that um, and then I made like 40 percent on the spider call this one did I have to 
yeah, I had to hold this overnight, so I could have made a little bit more money. But I'm, but it's pretty close to the day trade because this was supposed to be a day trade. But again, I have a restriction on my account. And then later today, I'll be posting my Nvidia profits because as soon as the market's open, I'm dumping that shit. All right, I, I got lucky yet again because the Nasdaq is up. Actually, it's way up. Oh, well, look at that. Well, huh. I could play even more greedy and just hold on to it, but I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, I'm already far beyond what I'm supposed to be doing. So, yeah, I'm going to be up 200%, I think, on this. So I could actually hold it, all right? Because according to Ayush, he says that the daily analysis says, the markets had a nice continuation yesterday after the breakout on Tuesday, but are a bit overbought in the near term. Best case scenario is consolidation day today. Worst would be a deep pullback. Not many new high probability setups. Uh, could be a sit on your hands day today. The supports for today are 392.5 and 388. If we hold above them, higher targets are 396, 400, and 404. If we fall back below 388, this breakout would ha have failed, and then uh, we'll see what happens today. Okay. Spy is running pre-market. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now the markets are just like insane right now. Like it literally is just going up. And funny enough, crude oil is crashing. Uh, all right. So I mean, the reason, because the reason why I want to look at this, the chip spill, is because this is what's pumping everything too. Like this is the one-two punch. Fed easy money. Chip spill because this is worth fifty-two billion dollars. And then Intel and NVIDIA are going to go skyrocketing. I mean, that's actually why NVIDIA is going up like crazy. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to definitely be looking to re-enter to buy uh, NASDAQ futures, NVIDIA calls, Intel calls. Let me see. Let's actually click one of these. Uh, okay. Let's see. I mean, technically AMD should get a benefit from this too because they make chips as well. Oh, yeah, I gotta look up Texas Instruments. But I mean, the reason why I like Nvidia is because Nancy and Paul Pelosi bought $8 million worth of stock in Nvidia and are now trying to pass this chips bill. So it's obviously, you know, insider trading. So, and it's pretty odd. And then the Senate already approved it like three, uh, two to one. So they have like a close to a super majority, which in our case is 66 out of 100 people. So I think it's. 64 out of uh, 100 people advanced the bill. So everyone wants this shit passed. So, and then everyone that kind of bitches about China, they kind of also need to pass this bill too because it does, because this is actually true. Because they actually want to compete against China because, you know, we are too over reliant on China, at least here in America. So, you know, we do actually need to build, you know, chip factories because they're, expe they're expensive. I really hate these pop ups. They're expensive. They take like four to ten years to make, uh, and it is actually a security breach because we're completely reliant on China and Taiwan. But if China takes over Taiwan, I mean, what's China? I mean, what's America gonna do, right? You can't, you can't do shit, all right? You know that basically means China. Ha oh yeah, it's 64 to 34. It basically means China has our, has America by the balls, right? Globalists in the West don't like that, so you know they're evil and they're stupid, but they're not that stupid, all right? You know, there's one thing we could always rely on. The globalists always want to maintain control and power. That's what I've been uh, learning from Andrew Tate. Because, yeah, he's uh, like, I'm just, I'm just completely blown away. I'm just completely blown away. So hopefully, I mean, I'm definitely gonna buy a home all cash. You know, I'm just gonna try to live within my means. I'll have to buy like a. I mean, I don't know how much a Tesla car costs, but I think it's like forty to sixty thousand. So that's kind of a lot for, for me. So I might have to buy a shittier car at first, uh, and then I'll upgrade later. I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean, the, my priority is to just move out and stop renting. That's the first thing I have to do, right? And then I'll just keep, you know, making more and more money. I'll branch out of stock trading because it's easy money now, but once things start turning against us yet again, I mean, then I'm just, we're just not going to make any. I'm not going to make any more money. So I need like. Hopefully affiliate marketing will be uh, up in Hustlers University. If not, I'm going to do e-commerce uh, stuff. It only costs 500 bucks to start. And I have a little bit of experience with that too. So, 
All right, so that's that. I mean, again, we're just going higher because the economy is dying. Easy money continues to flow in. And from what I can tell from the U.S. debt markets, they look pretty stable. All right, and then the dollar. Look at the U.S. dollar. It's actually going down. It's like every foreign currencies are getting stronger. Dollar index is getting weaker. All I can say is we're just going to the moon. We're just going to go to the moon. And then I'm keeping my eye on the chip bill because... They say the vote is for next Tuesday or Wednesday. It keeps changing because obviously this thing is moving. So if this thing passes, which it should, we are going straight to the moon. Now, it could be possible that the market's pricing that in and then they're going to dump on the news, right? Buy the rumors, sell the news. I don't know. Again, I just can't get out of my head that, they, that Paul and Nancy Pelosi bought NVIDIA stock. Not options, but they bought $8 million worth of NVIDIA. So that's a big portion of their wealth. And they bought long stock. They didn't buy options. They just straight up bought the NVIDIA stock. Oh, and lo and behold, yeah, it's pushing for 180. So I'm definitely going to dump this. I mean, it would be cool to wait this out to 185 or even 190, and then I would make like 1,000%. But uh, that's actually a really bad mindset to have. And that's what I'm learning at the Hustlers University. So I'll take my two, 250, 200, 250% profit. I'll finally break $4,000 plus on my stock market account or get very close. And then just call it, you know, because we're supposed to just sit back and wait. Where's Twitter? Oh, here's Twitter. Uh, aftermarket is up one penny. Yeah, so Twitter's still doing pretty well. So. All right, so that's the stock market indices. We're supposed to consolidate today, and to be honest, I kind of want to see a pullback. So maybe we might see the pullback later today. We might see it tomorrow. Um, the 10-year the yield is starting to climb a little bit. Uh, Amazon's getting into the medical business. So uh, let me see. What am I looking for? Yeah, I mean, we just have a confluence of crazy shit next week. We got the chips bill, we got the FOMC meeting on Wednesday, and we have the GDP report. I mean, uh, on Monday, I'm definitely going to buy some calls and maybe puts and then try to play this little gamble. <clears throat> but again, ideally, I want to see a pullback. So, I don't know. I might not even trade next week. Like, that's how, that's how difficult it's going to be because there's just too much uh, news shit going on. Okay, so people are still pricing in a 75 basis rate point. It's basically two-thirds. Okay, well, PDVC went down yesterday slightly, I think, too, right? PDVC. Yeah, it went down slightly, and today, right now, it's going down. It's 90, it says 9.01 a.m., but it's 9.03 on my uh, computer. So commodity prices are coming down. Crude oil is crashing like crazy for some reason. The dollar is crashing. So inflation is definitely going to be coming down for sure. All right? People should actually start noticing that prices should be coming down where you are, at least in America. Outside of America, I mean, um, I don't know. You'll have to check the, I guess, commodity prices for your country. Uh, but there is a lag effect. So, yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, I want to look at Fed repo. Yeah, I mean, this thing is still slightly going up. So, I don't know, we'll have to keep an eye on 10-year yield. I haven't really been listening too much to Greg Bannerino. Uh, I mean, I'm still watching him and Chuck Barone, but it's very obvious that the, the bearish buyers is just a little too much. But I'll still listen to people because it's important that I keep a open mind. And then, like, okay, what do I know to be true and false that everyone else believes? I'm trying to go too fast. What do I believe to be true that everyone else believes to be true that is actually false and what does everyone believe to be false that is actually true because I want to counter trade what is actually what people believe all right everyone basically thinks we're going to shit all right and people still think oh economy is shit so the stock markets might go down no it's the opposite now the weaker the economy gets the more the stock markets go up Right? at least that's something Greg Manorino has already drilled in our heads for a while he hasn't mentioned he hasn't talked about it in a while that's exactly what's happening. Because as long as the economy falters, the inflation remains steady. And if inflation remains steady, well, what can the Federal Reserve do? Oh, well, they can start pumping more money, right? 
problem is they have to be careful about the U.S. debt market. All right. I knew yesterday I would probably be okay because I looked over at the U.S. debt market and the U.S. dollar, which was getting strength yesterday. I go, oh, okay, more money will be pumping into the market, so I can probably hold this Nvidia call to tomorrow, which is today, and then be okay. All right. Again, and then I kept watching this and go, oh yeah. See, now it's starting to go up. So if this thing actually starts selling off a little bit, that might actually spook the markets. But I'm going to be out in 25 minutes. So, all right. So that's that. Uh, believe it or not, unless you're in the Hustlers University, I would probably avoid trading stocks and maybe even cryptocurrencies. Because cryptocurrency has been holding pretty well. But obviously, when we got a nasty pullback, right, a whiplash effect is going to bring everything down, crypto, stocks, whatever. So, and again, next next Wednesday, we have way too many, we have way too much shit going on. We have three major problems. I, and believe it or not, I think the least impact is actually this, because I was thinking about it. Everyone can see this, and it's pretty obvious that everyone knows we're in a recession, at least on the Wall Street, right? They're not dumb, right? They're worth trillions of dollars. Their companies are worth trillions of dollars for a reason. So they know they'll just look this shit up and then go... Oh, hey, you know, CNBC, you know, Fox Business. Hey, tell people, hey, we're not in a recession now, but we should start thinking about being in a recession later this year. And, you know, start, you know, the propaganda machine. So I'm thinking this is already kind of priced in, in the markets. All right. Then there's uncertainty about the Fed rate hike. And then there's uncertainty about whether this bill will pass or not. So we got 75 basis points. We're good to go because that's what people are pricing in mostly. Obviously, if this passes, this is highly bullish. Uh, the only problem might be, oh, we're actually in a recession, but not so bad. So how, how much will stupid people believe the propaganda? Considering the events of the past few years, I think it's gonna be, this is going to be a little bit hard. It's going to be a little bit hard. So again, we'll have to look at you know the debt market here. All right, so I think that's all I have for you. Let me think, and yeah, and then once I start making a lot of money, I'll you know get better clothes. You know, I'll probably get a girlfriend. Actually, I'll probably have tons of girls. I actually know a lot of hot girls are starting to follow me on Twitter, which is great, right? But I mean, I, I right now my situation is not exactly stable enough to have like a girlfriend or waste time chasing women, right? So it's uh, but yeah, and um. Yeah, you know, I, I don't actually like doing it, but I'll probably have to do it if I want to actually have people take me more seriously and start growing this channel and growing the Twitter. All right, I'll have to start, like, posting, like, interesting pictures that, hey, I got money, here's some cool shit of me doing cool stuff and whatever. I don't know, I'll worry about it later. Yeah, and of course, we can get out of this uh, dreary little apartment that I live in. I mean, I actually like it, but, you know, now that I want to be a top G... You know, I gotta set my standards, you know, higher. So, but that's all right. I mean, just working towards a goal and just climbing the ladder of life, you know. Because I have the most important part. <laughs> I'm actually in a community where people know what they're doing. They're not stupid, like the dissident right, and their positive networking effect. You can actually hear me uh, talk more about that, but I still need to. I'm still learning a lot of stuff. I still have so many videos to go through. There's so much shit to do and learn. So, but. But yeah, I'm kind of understanding why people, at least especially in the Republican space, right-wing people, why we're so ineffective. Right? Because we really just don't know how to network properly. Like, And when we do network, we network like retards. right? We, we have a negative effect on everyone. So that's why I'm kind of curious what's going to happen. The so-called Christian hardcore right versus kind of like the alt-light and I guess the Andrew Tate right, I guess. So, yeah, I, God put me here for a reason, so I'm very excited to find out what it is. I'm just glad that we're making money, and, um, yeah, and I don't think I want to actually cover too many crypto projects. It's got to be at least as good as Stable Fund app, or maybe even BNB Miner, even though BNB Miner is coming down. All right, because there's just too many, because I don't want to be teaching people how to just try to get in and out real quick in DeFi. Like, I know it's more subscribers, but that's just not a sustainable way to make money. So, I'm not, so you know, but whatever. All right, anyway, we went over a lot. So, um, yeah, all right, I better, I, better, uh, I better get ready to trade. So, 
Uh, like, subscribe, share this video around. Thank you again to all the uh, old and new people watching this video. Uh, thank you, thank you, welcome, welcome. And um, yeah, as long as the good times continue to roll, you know, because we should be getting out of a bear market, definitely follow my Twitter. And, and while well, you're watching this YouTube, so obviously just stay subscribed to this YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'll be posting all my wins here. Uh, problem is the interface really sucks on my broker, and they don't. And then there's a there's a pro, there's an actual profit and loss UI. The problem is it waits an entire day. I don't have time to wait on that, so it doesn't show me my because I need to show my shit in real time. So I'll just try to like write down my losses and say how much money I lost, all right, and then how much I get back, and and then I'll try to do my do my best. And yeah, a bunch of people just got annihilated. Right? This used to be 238 or 239 following. It's like, I can't wait for, I mean, I can't wait for Elon Musk. I mean, the courts are going to make Elon Musk buy Twitter for $44 billion. So, whatever. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day or night, wherever you are from. I will see you all tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's Friday. Oh, yeah. Man. I feel like we, I got, we've, I've done like two weeks worth of work in this week. It's, it's amazing. I love it. See you tomorrow, uh, and uh, happy trading.